what happened at Google I.O. today, May 20. I'm going to run you through what I think we're going to remember in a year, not just what the hype was about. And I will just give you the hype right now. The hypiest thing was a Douglas Adams style live translation where there was Hindi and English and Farsi going back live on stage. They apparently didn't pre-program it or fake it, and it worked. But beyond that, what's actually going to stick around? Number one, Gemini is aiming to become the new interface layer. So AI mode is rolling out to every US user this week. There's going to be a Gemini-powered conversational pane alongside classic search results. They're putting deep search, chart generation, shop inside AI mode, whatever that means, uh, on the roadmap. Google is looking to defend ad space from perplexity. It's looking to defend ad space from chat GPT. It doesn't want you using something else to search. I'm sure they were not happy to hear at a Q from Apple talking about the fact that Apple has seen declining search volume in April for the first time in two decades from Google. This is definitely aimed in that direction. Second big takeaway there is going to be a paid to your business model for LLMs and the price range is taking shape. It's between 100 and 250 bucks a month. Google's is coming in high. They're calling it AI Ultra. It bundles the highest end Gemini models. It bundles early feature access, Gemini in Chrome, Project Mariner with agentic automation, etc., and higher usage caps across workspace apps. You want Google to lean hard on the upsell if you want competition for OpenAI, Microsoft, and Anthropic. But ultimately, what we're seeing is a new class of super AI access for people willing to pay three figures a month for essentially an AI assistant in the pocket. And critically, because these are not one-for-one -one replacement tools, some people are going to pay more than one of these. This is past cable bill pricing. This is people being willing to plunk down 200 for chat GPT, 250 for Google. There you go. That's almost 500 bucks right there. And so look for that to start to consolidate, just like we had the streaming wars in the late 2010s between Netflix and Disney Plus and Prime Video. We are now having this premium class uh, AI subscriber wars, and it's just warming up. Third big takeaway, it's about integrations all over the place. So Chrome integration for Gemini, Gemini getting into your Gmail with smart replies. Uh, I'll believe that one when I see it, I got to say. Uh, Gemini coming in with Google Meet, real-time speech translation and search live. Uh, so they're extending multimodal. Fundamentally, Google is trying to flood the zone with Gemini everywhere. The challenge is Google does not have a product czar and part of what I worry about is that Gemini is an excellent model that doesn't have the anchoring brand power of ChatGPT right now. And so they're flooding the zone with all of this Gemini. But I have to ask myself, which Gemini do I get where? And that is not a question you want still surfacing for consumers after all this time. But the models are good. Reasoning depth is the fourth takeaway I have. They're adding deep think mode, which is exactly what it sounds like. Multi-step reasoning, math, code. This is very much in the zone for like Claude 3.7 and extended thinking. You're seeing these options where the interfaces are starting to condense around, do you want it to think harder? Do you want high effort mode? Select here. And so Gemini 2.5 Pro is absolutely going that direction as well. Number five, this one should worry uh, Tim Cook and Mark Zuckerberg. The Project Aura Smart Glasses prototype, it was involved in the live translation piece. It looks like it's integrated very deeply into the Android ecosystem. It looks like it's serious about fashion with the Warby Parker integration. I, It looks like a real player in the space. We have to get out of the stage and into people's eyeballs so people can see what really happens and how this extended reality story actually plays out. But it's something to keep an eye on from a device perspective, uh, particularly with Meta and Apple that have both been working on those devices. Sixth takeaway I have is that we are moving past gimmicks for generative media. So they are creating Flow, which is a filmmaking app. It combines Veo, it combines Imogen. They, it, they, they improved both, better text rendering, multi-aspect, 
exports, better camera controls for Veo. The idea is that you now have sort of a semi-pro amateur creative suite that's an alternative to Sora, it's an alternative to Runway, it keeps creators in the house, it makes the idea of creating a 30 second ad not something you have to go outside the house for, you can just do it yourself. And of course, number seven, some steps toward true agents. Project Astra, it now decides when to speak or act based on real-time camera input, that's new. And then Project Mariner, which is of course available inside Ultra, it can execute up to 10 chain tasks at once. This is still gated stuff. It's not out to everybody yet, but Google's absolutely going after that proactive agent vision along with, frankly, everybody and their brother at this point. So if you think about sort of how this all ladders up, I talk about sort of strategic questions and what we'll be asking ourselves next year or over the long term for this kind of play. I think one of my takeaways looking at this entire overarching day is that Google thinks distribution is a bottleneck, and I'm not sure I agree. So I, I, I wanted to call out, like as a strategic question for the week, which stubborn bottleneck is a keynote attacking? And is that attack coherent? I think the attack was coherent. I just don't know that I agree. In this case, Google is attacking distribution, not model quality. Fundamentally, most of the releases were about Gemini being ambient, Gemini being everywhere, in Chrome, in Gmail, in Search, in workspace drafting, in your Android XR glasses, et cetera. It's surface area. The thing is, I would not have defined distribution as their bottleneck. And I think that they risk that fragmentation that comes from not having a coherent product perspective across the entire ecosystem. So it doesn't read like a laundry list. That's the piece that I worry about for them. In terms of the price and capacity threshold, the other big piece I would pay attention to is how many people decide to switch to AI Ultra Plan. They're sort of in the position of Disney Plus in the streaming war race, where they are late to the party. People already have one or two subscriptions with Claude and ChatGPT. Are you really dumping out ChatGPT Pro, which now has memory and is kind of sucking you in to go to your AI Ultra Plan on Gemini? I don't know. Is it worth enough to add it? Not for everybody. That's the question I'm going to be watching. So there you go. That's my readout on the first day of Google I.O. There's lots more to come.